A San Diego judge is expected to make a ruling at any time for the placement of a sexually violent predator named Douglas Badger. KUSI has been reaching out to the state agency managing SVPs, and we finally received a response tonight. KUSI's Teresa Sardina joins us live from the Mount Helix community with more tonight. Teresa, what do we find out? Good evening, Ginger. Well, we are still on standby. Will Judge Weathers place the sexually violent predator, Douglas Badger, right there in his home, right behind me? Wow, it's been a, a, an overwhelming day talking to residents, but we have some positive news. KUSI has been reaching out to Liberty Healthcare, the agency that has been managing these sexually violent predators. So they had forwarded our questions to California Department of State Hospitals. They replied to us this evening at 8 o'clock, and they answered only a few of our questions. Take a look. Obviously, they vetted the house, so they must have used some criteria, and we just want them to produce it. Mount Helix residents waiting for San Diego Judge Theodore Weathers' decision on placement for 78-year-old SVP Douglas Badger at this home on Horizon Hills Drive. KUSI News asks California Department of State Hospitals these questions. The department replies Thursday evening. Who conducts programs to rehabilitate sexually violent predators? Under state law, the Department of State Hospitals is responsible for providing treatment to a patient who is committed to the department as a sexually violent predator. Predator, who approves and monitors Liberty Healthcare programs for SVPs. DSH contracts with Liberty Healthcare to supervise, treat, and monitor all SVPs currently in the conditional release program in the community. Who contracts with them to find locations for placement of SVPs? Under its contract with DSH, Liberty Healthcare's responsibilities for supervising, treatment, and monitoring SVPs include individual contact, substance abuse testing, polygraph, and GPS monitoring. When a court determines that a SVP can be released into the community through the conditional release program, Liberty searches for housing for those individuals. Supervisor Joel Anderson of District 2 proves Liberty Healthcare is lying about legal viability of placements. Housing searches are carefully evaluated with significant considerations made to community safety and patient community integration beyond statutory requirements. Moving through the answer, this occurs in all cases where a housing placement is court approved. That's why we bought these houses. Yep. We bought these for our kids to have a fantastic life. Behind the movement, residents fighting to keep their community safe, SVPs out. We're still grappling with the fact that a judgment hasn't been made. And, and there is more to come. The Dreamer family live across the street from the proposed house for Badger. Kelly and David say it's been two months of torture. Obviously, you didn't do a very good job because it's been noted to be out of code compliance. They've done work on the house and not gotten permits. So uh, what criteria was used to pick this site? I know that's a lot of information, and they really did not answer a lot of the questions, one being the criteria, as you heard that Mount Helix resident address. Uh, they pretty much just said it's up to the courts, it's up to the courts. So KUSI replied to this information this evening, saying we want to further this discussion tomorrow. So we'll see what happens, but we're going to provide all of the questions and answers at KUSI.com. But also also, besides the criteria and the process to approve this home right behind me for the SVP, the bigger issue is the safety for the community. Ginger? So, Teresa, you mentioned that we're going to have more answers on our website with the full report, but did the department say what happens to that home right behind you if Douglas Badger is denied placement there? Yeah, I have all the questions and answers right here on my list, and that's something that was discussed this afternoon as we were talking to residents. They were saying, okay, Wakefield was denied placement here, and if Badger is denied, what is going to happen with this home? Is the court going to deny this contract? Are they going to just stop housing sexually violent predators in this home? So the answer to that one, I have it right here is the court makes the final decision on where a conditionally released patient will reside while receiving treatment. I know it's a little confusing, so we're actually going to contact them again to get more explanation because I, we feel like we really didn't get those answers. I'll send it back to you. 
Yeah, that's the court's way, or that's the state health uh, hospital's way of saying, we'll just give this to the courts and get back to you later. All right, great reporting tonight, Teresa. Thank you.